Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2. And a big thanks to Zach and the rest of the management and staff here at Chevrolet of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Wesley Chapel, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Zach. And for those of you guys who don't know, the ZR2 has been an off-road version of the fourth generation Chevy Silverado since 2022. For 2024, Chevy adds an optional 3-liter Duramax diesel option, which packs 305 horsepower and 495 pound-feet of torque. I apologize, guys. There's been this, like, helicopter little airplane thingy just floating around right above my head like an annoying little bee. Hopefully, it goes away somewhere, but just bear with me with the background noise. There's really not much that I can do. But the 6.2-liter V8 that we have here is now available with the active exhaust, which we also have here. And for an extra $9,000, you can get the more aggressive ZR2 Bison. But for the extra money, I would like to see Chevy add the 6.2 liter LT4 supercharged V8 to compete better with like the Raptor R or the TRX, even if they increase the price of the Bison by about five to 10,000 bucks. But since we don't get the LT4 supercharged V8 with the Bison, I'd recommend sticking with the regular ZR2. It's still a monster with 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque in a mean sounding 6.2 liter v8 with a base price a tick under 75,000 bucks what else do we get for that money let's jump right in so this is about as aggressive as a silverado is going to get we get full led headlamps and daytime running light all black grill we get a flow tie with red inlets red tow hooks up front too i apologize for the dirty paint color really not a whole lot that i can do i actually took this thing to a car wash and this is how dirty it looks even after the wash so you can only imagine what it looked like before the wash. We get a ZR2 badge on this little gunmetal gray strip underneath the bow tie. LED fog lights down below, some beefy 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler all terrain tires. The dimensions being 275-70 R18, so 18 inch black and silver contrasted rims. We get a four piston brake caliper and a six lug pattern. This is why you go with the ZR2 is because the trail boss's wheels and tires aren't aggressive enough and we get more aggressive shocks up front and out rear. I believe they're monotube active valve shocks. I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly what they're called. That annoying buzzy thing is back, so bear with me. I'll try to speed things along. We get an additional camera on the mirror to help us out with the 360. Blind spot monitoring on the glass. All black trim for the window trim. I just look at that thing. Why does he have to just float right above my head? I don't know, guys. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger. Hopefully, you guys can pause and take a look at the window sticker. I'll catch right back with you because I can't do that background noise. All right, guys, while he's a little bit farther away, take a pause, take a look at all the standard features with a sub $70,000 base price. It's not sub by a whole lot, but it is sub 70,000. Options, 1,970 bucks for the technology package. That includes a rear camera mirror, multicolor 15 inch diagonal heads up display, adaptive cruise control, power tilt and telescoping steering wheel. 1,500 bucks gets us the 6.2 liter Ecotec V8 above the three liter Duramax, 995 for the power sunroof, 445 for the multi-flex tailgate, 195 for the active exhaust, which we'll definitely take a listen to, 50 bucks for not getting a column steering lock. You can see everything else available, so about 5,000 bucks in total options, 1895 for the destination, totals us out a tick under 77,000 bucks. Fuel economy, 15 combined MPGs, 14 in the city, 17 on the highway. So the 6.2 liter V8 with these beefy tires is just simply not the most efficient. But you don't buy this truck for the efficiency. You buy it because it is absolutely sick. Premium fuels recommended. We get easy fill, no latches to open up this gas compartment, but it's not a push to open. The rear wheel and tire setup, I apologize for the glare. Same thing as up front. The only difference is a smaller brake caliper leaf springs and those multimatic active valve shocks as you guys can see right over there not quite sure what that scuff is on the frame hopefully it's no big deal for the potential owner of this vehicle i like the wheel well liners no 4x4 badge or anything but when you see the zr2 you know this thing comes with standard four-wheel drive we get led taillights halogen reverse light full rear parking sensing i like how chevy gives us the bed step making it a little easier to access your bed area they also give us the multi-pro tailgate which is a complete game changer chrome silverado badge in the corner chrome zr2 with red inserts for the two in the opposite corner black chevy bow tie two sets of cameras well one set of camera this is for the rear view and this is for your zone light we get a black chevy bow tie too shout out chevy of wesley chapel for helping make this review possible 
I'll shut this thing right up. Not exactly sure what that is for. Tow hitch, I'll leave a link right here to show you exactly what this truck is rated to tow. I'll demonstrate this Multi-Pro tailgate too. So this is the top tier of the Multi-Pro tailgate. Not quite sure why you would need to do this. Maybe for some wood or lumber so it fits a little bit easier. Or kayaks. You can lift it right back up and press the bottom button and the entire tailgate now falls down. You can lift this thing right back up. And now you have about an extra foot and a half of bed space. So this also works for lumber, also works for bikes, kayaks, ATVs, whatnot. You can press that top button again. And now the entire multi-pro tailgate falls down. You see those plastic inserts. You can throw some speakers in there, connect it to your fuse box and really liven up the party for the tailgate. But this step is without question the best in the business. We also have a grab handle to make things a little bit easier to get on or in this bed area so just foot on the step hand on the grab handle and pretty easy access for the third brake light it's full led and we have a zone light and a digital rear view camera zr2 etched in the spray and bed liner we get three sets of hooks in every corner for this truck led lighting and an ac outlet in the corner that's about it though guys we'll hop out of this tailgate area of course that annoying plane thing he's back so we'll throw everything Right back to where it was, shut this inside pocket, take a step back, get a squat back here, fire up this beefy 6.2 liter V8 with the active exhaust, and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, of course, as soon as we're ready to start, another plane takes off. I think I need to find a new spot to do my videos here when I do them with Chevy of Wesley Chapel. But here we have our 6.2 liter Ecotec V8 sold by Chevy for the 2024 Silverado ZR2. And it sounds awesome with this active exhaust, cranking out 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, enough to get this 55 plus 100 pound full-size truck to 60 in the mid to high five second range, making it a no joke performer with four wheel drive and these beefy 33 inch off-road tires. This is a really capable off-road truck. We had some supports to helping up the stiffness of this chassis. And because of that, even though we have these upgraded shocks, fatter tires, this thing still handles better than my Ram 1500 Bighorn. And I love the look of those tires and a really aggressive front end. If I didn't mention, we also have a 6.2 L badge on the hood bulge, not a functional heat extractor, but definitely makes this hood look a lot more aggressive. LED turn signal on the mirror too, if I didn't mention, and smart access for the front doors. Finally, taking a step inside, we get soft touch up top, some faux carbon trim beneath that, aluminum door handle, two-person memory seats, lock and unlock, leather stitching for the armrest, and it's gushy soft leather stitching in the center, Bose premium audio system, and a ton of storage down below. You'll stack two footlongs on top of each other and you'll fit two 24 ounce bottles right next to each other. We get some additional storage for this little grab handle area. ZR2 nameplate as we step inside, Chevrolet for the all weather floor mats. The seats, they're a really premium leather design with yellow contrast stitching. It almost feels like a marine grade leather. We get heated and ventilation for the middle portion. You can adjust the lumbar, recline, drop, lift, and slide the front seats taking a step inside unfortunately no running boards i would really appreciate a set of running boards for an off-road capable pickup truck that is this high off the ground but foot on the brake engine start stop and everything fires right to life but all right guys since 2022 really not a whole lot has changed we reviewed a 2022 zr2 and countless 2022 and 2023s even 2024 1500 silverados so compared to the higher trims really not a whole lot has changed outside of the active exhaust being available which we've already demonstrated with the high country 2024 we reviewed on this channel so we're not going to go into too in-depth of a review for this interior we're going to mostly make this vehicle about the outside and the test drive but the steering wheel is typical chevy silverado just like the rest of the lineup it's decently thick but no 10 and 2 bolstering 9 and 3 still feels fine three spokes on the bottom the horn area is rubberized black bow tie horn itself loud and aggressive we'll see if we get dual pane windows we do not the GMC Sierra AT4 does get dual pane windows, so it might be a little bit quieter in the interior. We get our depth of cruise control on the left side, forward collision alert and a heated steering wheel on the right side, voice commands, you can hang up and answer your phone calls and adjust 
this infotainment. These are all the adjustments. We're not gonna go into too much detail for them. Just a typical Chevy infotainment adjustment display. You can adjust also what the gauges look like, but we're not gonna be going through all that. My personal favorite to look at at all times would be the digital speedo. 140 for the analog digital speedo on the right side of TAC goes to about 5,500 RPM. Fuel level down below, coolant temperature and fuel level in the right corner. Awesome. It's 12.3 inch digital gauge display and a 13.4 inch touchscreen. To the left of the steering wheel, we have a power tilt and telescope. That's nice for the price point. Auto headlamps, auto high beams, and we get fog lights as well. Zone light up top, interior brightness, drive mode select. We get off-road, terrain, sport, and normal. So normal mode closes the valves, sport mode opens them up. So take a listen, this is normal mode. Not very loud. This is sport mode. A Little bit more aggressive. There you go. And we'll see if off-road stays the same. It does. And we'll see if terrain also stays the same. Never mind. To be in terrain, you have to shift into four-wheel drive high. So we'll do exactly that. Just temporarily. Four-wheel drive high. Terrain. And, yep, still loud. So the only mode that's quiet is normal mode. We'll throw this thing back into two-wheel drive. So when we take it out for a drive, we're not in four-wheel. To the left of that, we get an electronic parking brake and our tow haul mode. Above that, of course, being our four-wheel drive information with four-wheel drive auto. We get a heads-up display too. It's GM's 15-inch display, and it's a very large, one of the best in the business. All soft touch for the dashboard. It's actually leather stitch trim. You get a little bit of storage behind this 13.4-inch touchscreen. Speaking of the touchscreen, let's check it out. Once it loads up, I'll catch right back with you. There we go. It took a minute to really load up, but as you see, the response is excellent. It's still not fully loaded up, but you get the point. Beneath that, we have our lane keep assist, parking sensors you can turn on or off. That's convenient if you're off-roading. Auto start stop, electronically dropping tailgate, traction control you can disable, hill descent control. And we don't just have lockers for the rear axle, we have lockers for the front as well. That's why you go ZR2 over Trail Boss. More of that faux carbon trim beneath it, trailer brake controller, engine start stop, dual zone automatic front climate control, and we get heated and ventilated seats. For the heated function, you can adjust whether or not you want your back or your back and butt heated up. We don't get any wireless charging pad here, but it's located right back there underneath the armrest. The gear selector controls the snappy shifting 10-speed automatic transmission. The backup camera, we can check it out. Right now, the guidance lines are turned off, but we can turn them back on. We get guidance lines and trajectory. We could alternate between a rear view and a front facing camera. No guidance lines or trajectory for the front facing. You can check out the over the top front and you can check out over the top for the rear, which has guidance lines and trajectory. You also have blind spot cameras, so you don't have to worry about scuffing up these beefy 33 inch wheels and tires. Over the top trailer hitch view as well. We can go right back to that first rear view camera screen that we had. Awesome. If I didn't mention, we also have an over the top 360 camera on the left side too, also with guidance lines and trajectory. Truly a loaded vehicle when it comes to tech, and when it comes to performance and capability, also in my opinion, a loaded vehicle. Ton of storage for the center stack. I kind of prefer the way that Ram does it with the, I don't really like the dial that Ram has, but because of that, we don't have this gear selector in the middle, which allows us to have a little bit more usable storage. The center console armrest is gushy soft. This is the softest one I've felt from any Silverado. We get a little two-tier storage compartment. Throw some coins and business cards in here. AC outlet, USB A and C port, interior light. I apologize for that sun, guys. It is beaming on us. Bear with me, we'll be done shortly. We can probably fit four one liter bottles of soda in there. Put this cubby right back, shutting this console up. We get two tier glove boxes open up the first tier. You simply press this button. You'll probably fit about two or three pairs of gloves in there. Then we get some leather stitching for the outside of it. Hard plastic around the actual glove box, but it's large. You'll fit 20 to 25 license plates in there with no problem. Two pairs of shoes if you're under a size 10. We get a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. It's also a digital camera mirror. We'll leave it in the camera mode when we take this thing out for a drive so you can see everything that's behind me. And we get the adjustments for the camera mirror. Three garage home link settings. LED interior light. You get a fifth opening rear window and it opens up super quickly. Hopefully you can pick it up on camera. And as we mentioned earlier, we get a sunroof. To open up the sunroof, you press and hold and it goes inside of the roof. So it's not gonna stick out like a sore thumb. Poking away out of here. Beautiful day in Tampa, Florida. Sunny 
and at 80 degrees according to this 2024 ZR2. To shut the sunroof up, you simply click the button, leave the shade open so when we hop out back, you can see how much light is brought into the cabin. But as you see, there is quite a bit of light being brought into the cabin. We also get paddle shifters. They don't work for regular drive. You gotta be in the low gear for the paddle shifters. But nevertheless, that's about it for the front seat. Again, kind of wish we had running boards, but you can add those in for about 200 bucks. That's what I did with my Ram. Our rear, up top, we still get soft touch materials with that faux carbon beneath, soft touch separating the continuation of that stitch material. Leather armrest, decent amount of storage, auto one touch the way down, but you gotta press and hold for the way back up. More stitching for the center, massive storage compartment. You'll feel like a 16 inch sub, maybe stacked two on top of each other with a 24 ounce water bottle. Additional Bose speaker, no nameplate as you step inside. The legroom looks crazy impressive. The rear seats are still that leather trim with yellow contrast stitching, some additional storage, famous for the Silverado. You can lift these seats up and you get some additional storage. That's convenient for hunting equipment, fishing equipment, and the seat drops right back down. Let's take a step inside again, no running board, so you gotta really use those grab handles. Ton of legroom. I have over a foot of knee space, head space. I have three, four inches thanks to this cutout up here. So if you're under seven feet tall, you should be able to sit in the back of a Silverado with no problem. We get map box behind both of the front seats, heated rear seats, USB A and C port with air vents. I kind of wish the air vents blew in our face, but at least we get air vents back here. Definitely can't complain. The armrest has a string. It's a pretty soft leather pouch, but compared to like the higher trims on the Ram trucks, this is a little bit behind. The seat comfort though is definitely not behind. I'm really comfortable back here. The interior lights are also LED to be expected considering the rear or the front were also LED. Two additional cup holders for this console and that's about it for the inside. Fortunately, the child locks are on. You couldn't even imagine the climb I just had to make to get back into the front seat. But that's about it though, guys, for the inside and outside of this all new 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2. It is a really impressive off-road capable full-size truck. Again, I apologize for the sun, but when it's beaming right at us, there's really not much that I can do. This is quite literally the only spot I was able to find within like a five minute drive, and this thing is almost out of fuel. So if you wanna take this thing out for a test drive, this had to have been the spot. But speaking of test drive, let's take this monster 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2 out for a drive and see what it's got. All right, guys, now we're just about seeing everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new, I guess you can say all new, 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. That sun is brutal. That daylight savings, time change, sun, it's only 4.30 and the sun's about to come down. Anyway, though, my first impressions with the ZR2 is just how commanding of a view of the road you get. I have a Ram 1500 now, so I'm no longer used to a Camaro. Back when I was used to my Camaro, every time I got into the truck, any truck, I would say how commanding of a view of the road there is. But now that I'm used to a truck, this is still commanding. These beefy off-road tires, 33 inch tires, about a two inch lift kit, and just this monster hood in front of us. With this active exhaust, we're in normal mode. This is a regular exhaust, about half throttle. It sounds pretty good but definitely nothing to write home about. The brakes, they don't quite feel as good as a Ram, but the handling feels so good. This is sport mode, about third throttle. A lot more beef coming into the, through the interior. Because of that, I'm leaving this truck permanently in sport mode. It makes the steering a little bit heavier too, and even in normal, the steering in the Silverado is, in my opinion, the best in the business. The handling, as you see through the turn, I don't even feel body roll. This is an off-road oriented pickup truck, full-size pickup truck, like yes, the brakes. You can feel the weight of this vehicle, but only through the brakes. Through the steering, absolutely not. Half throttle, Ooh. snappy shifts. Look, through the turn, we're going 40 miles an hour right now. We'll slow down about 30 for this one. But look, full-size pickup truck making turns like this. And that exhaust sounds awesome. Yeah, guys, this thing can handle for a full-size truck. I wouldn't even want to be hitting turns as fast in my Ram, but this feels great. <laughs> and even two-wheel drive, it puts that power down. We're, of course, not going to lock any axles here. We're not going to throw it even into four-wheel drive because it's quite simply not necessary. It grips so good with these tires. Great response. Yes, it doesn't feel quite as quick as the High Country reviewed in this channel. The High Country had a little bit less 
beefy of tires, but they were still all terrains. I would expect that high country to be maybe two tenths of a second quicker to 60, if that. We'll try one out off the line. We'll try it out at first in two wheel drive, see if the wheel spin is manageable off the line on the yes. Oh yeah, a lot of wheel spin. But it takes off and it puts you in the seat pretty well. The ride quality over the bumps is good. This is the best riding Silverado. The High Country had also a very good ride, but with these beefier tires, this feels a little bit softer when you at least hit the big bumps. Over the rougher terrain, maybe it balances a little bit more compared to a High Country, but over just regular terrain, it's perfectly fine. Hopefully that squirrel moves out of the way. We're just moving along, the steering feels a little bit less on center once you're at higher speeds. And I am hearing a little bit of hum with the tires but really nothing that's not manageable it's still a very very quiet interior all right guys we can try it out one time in four-wheel drive auto take a step right here and try one more out off the line so full stop off the line on the gas oh my god yeah Ooh, yeah that time it definitely put its power down Ooh, yeah guys this thing is it feels quicker than my Ram Bighorn, but honestly not by much. Car and Driver tested the Ram at about 6 seconds, 6.2, where they tested this at about 5.7, but personally, I just don't feel that big of a difference. The High Country we reviewed, I definitely felt the difference. It felt noticeably quicker than my Ram. Maybe it's because I'm a little bit higher off the ground here, but to me, it just feels really about the same. But as far as like performance and actual capability, this is twice the truck. Towing wise, no, it's not gonna tow as much as like a regular pickup truck, but you wouldn't be buying an off-road dominant truck for the towing capability. But even though this is an off-road dominant truck, the handling is so good. The isolation from the road is so good. And the performance, whoo, so good. And in sport mode with this active exhaust, it sounds awesome. The only thing that I would change about this truck are the brakes. If this truck had the Ram brakes, it would be perfect. It would be like a no brainer to buy it compared to the competition. Ford also has a little bit slushy of brakes, but they also feel a little bit tighter than this. So Chevy, if you wanna create the perfect pickup truck, give us some more sensitive brakes. Same thing with GMC. GMC is even like a step above when it comes to premium materials, premium ride, and premium features and feel. And they cost a couple thousand bucks more, but even still, this gives you just about the exact same truck compared to like a AT4 X Sierra. While giving you arguably better looks, I think this looks a lot more aggressive than an AT4 X Sierra. But if you like the more elegant style, I can see why you would choose an AT4 X Sierra over this. But if you're just looking for the most off-road capability, most features, most tech, and most horsepower under seventy thousand dollars, I genuinely do not see how you can possibly beat this truck. Taking a step out here. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> it's just such a smooth riding vehicle. Fuel economy is obviously gonna be horrible, especially if you're gonna be driving it like I am in this review. But if you drive it like I am in this review, especially while you test drive it, you're gonna want this truck. It is quick. It handles really well. It's capable. It's got beefy off-road tires on it, and it looks sick. If that's what you're looking for, guys, and you don't want to spend more than seventy to seventy-five thousand bucks, I would one hundred percent recommend checking out the 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2. I wouldn't necessarily recommend checking out the Bison if you love the look of the Bison, want the more um, off-road oriented Silverado above the ZR2. Of course, check out the Bison. But for the eighty plus thousand dollar price point, especially with vehicles like the Ram TRX, you spend an extra ten thousand, you can get a Ram TRX. You spend an extra fifteen twenty, you can get a Raptor R. And I'm not obviously that's a more those are more expensive trucks, but you're getting so much more truck for that ten fifteen twenty thousand dollars. Therefore, if Chevy had the ZR2 as it sits with a sixty nine to seventy thousand dollar base price, and had the Bison instead of at eighty, had it at ninety. But at 90, they offer you the LT4 supercharged V8, or at least give you an option for an additional $9,000, $10,000 to option in that LT4 supercharged V8. This would be the best truck on the road today, bar none. Because that LT4, let's be real, I prefer that way more than the Hellcat engine. 
from Dodge. I even preferred over the Voodoo 5.2, or not Voodoo 5.2, but the 5.2 supercharged engine from Ford because that engine, I've heard nothing but bad things in terms of reliability. That LT4 supercharged 6.2, it's probably the most reliable way to get over 600 horsepower nowadays. And you throw that into a sub $100,000 full-size off-road truck, I think people would really, really like it. But anyway, guys, if you're looking for the $70,000 off-road truck, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2024 Chevy Silverado ZR2. And a big thanks to Zach and the rest of the management and staff here at Chevy of Wesley Chapel for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Wesley Chapel, Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for Zach. And huge thanks to all of you guys for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you. And I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.